Hello, welcome to the lobby, GameSpot's weekly hangout every Tuesday at 2 p.m. right here on GameSpot.com. That was fun. Oh my god, it's one week to E3. Hype! By this time next week, Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo, Ubisoft, EA, who else? Konami, maybe if we're lucky, will have had their press conferences. So this week on the show, we're not going to play any video games. We're just going to talk to people about what we think might happen this year at the Electronic Triple. This week, I'm delighted to be joined by Mr. Chris Waters as ever. Hey, Danny. Seb Ford. Finally made it. You did, you're here. Yeah. yeah. From the UK. <sighs> and uh, and of course, Sean McGuinness. Hey, Danny. How's How you it doing? doing? Very well. How yeah. are you? I'm doing very I'm well. Thank you. You didn't come very far. I know. I came from like down the hallway. Yeah. It's not as far as Seb. No. But I still put forth an effort. Indeed. That's I know. a long way. Yeah, sure and, did, and buddy. We've got a bunch more people from the UK. And we've well, also got, well, got AU people. folks as well. Yeah. So hop on. I'm all right. Sure. The international crew. We're going to talk about all of these Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo, and all that third-party stuff in like individual sections. I got E3 here to talk about Microsoft. First of all, last year's E3 for them was not great. Oh my it, God, no, the disaster it, heard around yeah. the world. It's like set the tone for the next like year of, of bad news and backtracking for those guys. Yeah, when you're immediately flip-flopping on your E3 press conference two weeks later, it, you did a bad job. Yeah, so let's talk about, first of all, the latest flip-flop we've had, which is Kinect. Uh, Chris, what do you think they have to do with Kinect now that it's like been taken out of the box? Oh my god, so it's not in the box. So what is that? That's sa that sounds like a vote of no confidence. That's yeah. like, uh, sorry, we, you guys really don't want Kinect? Oh cool, you don't have to have it. Hmm. But like Kinect is a thing that's part of their system and origin last year, you know, they, they love to show off how it's like voice commands, touch, you know, like all, or gesture commands. They need to show that Kinect is cool, yeah. which I don't think they've even done at all. They've had yet. a long time to try and make the Connect cool. Yeah, they really I have. So <laughs> they have had a long time to make that really trendy. That's so what's <laughs> killing me is that like forever we've been waiting for that like killer hit Connect mm. game or like you know there's been some really good ones like Dan Central and stuff are really great. But, yeah, like, it just never happened. And I don't think it's I don't think it's going to happen on the scale that like Wii motion controls happen because right, yeah, they're yeah. not. It's not a core. It's not the integral like way that you interact with the whole system. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's a peripheral. It's off to the side. So I don't think we should expect the big killer app for it. I think we need to. They need to like lean into. This is a cool toy, and like the tech in this is actually pretty marvelous, yeah. as demonstrated by all the non Microsoft product uses that yeah. we've seen of it for yeah. years now. So I mean, People like hacking them on their PCs and stuff, yeah. and making yeah. weird games out of them. And I don't think we're going to get like the single one killer app because there's not quite the incentive that there used to be. Because previously, developers who decided to make a Connect game knew that 100% yeah. of Xbox Ones had a Connect sold with them, maybe not attached and in use, but at least they're sitting in a closet somewhere. Yeah. Now you can buy an Xbox One without a Kinect, and that install base isn't there anymore. So people have to get creative now. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's not that it's not there anymore. Like, still, people are still going to have it and get it, and like everything that's in the works is still in the works, mm -hmm. right? That's still going to happen. Well, yeah, harmonics so, like, are Fantasia, making yeah. two or three Maybe at the a Dance Central. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There, you, you'll get your Forza Horizon like be able to. Oh, perfect! You know, do yeah. That. yeah, great. Do you remember, do you remember when they did that with the original, like when uh, Kinect was first announced, all the way back, head, all the way. Back. Yeah, mm -hmm. head tracking. And you used to be able to. It was, it was all this stuff. It was like brake and accelerate. Remember how it didn't work? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's true. I really think they have to. I mean, you guys maybe saw in the pre-roll. I made a goofy box art for Kinect selfie. Yeah. And but I think that like having some kind of studio where you can play around with the camera and like record yourself over and over again and then share that video like that kind of thing like letting people play around with yeah. the connect and mm -hmm. then share that kind of stuff that's like that's getting your instagram that's getting your vine that's like tapping into that kind of social media stuff mm. sharing yeah. stuff that i think the connect is a fun tool they could do that's not going to sell connect but it's going to make right. people like Use it and, and if somebody with it. gets the console and then like at Christmas they figure they they want to drop an extra hundred dollars and actually pick up the thing on its own, then yeah. you know if there's enough uses to do it, then maybe people will. Right, it's not a matter now of selling the whole thing. It's like you just gotta. There's that yeah. incremental choice between the base model Xbox One and the with Connect. That's the you kind of have to sell them on that difference. Okay, let's get Connect edited away. They're probably gonna show off their like you know maybe some sort of bundle, the bundle without, maybe they'll bundle a game with or something. Mm -hmm. um, they'll have to mention it something. They can backpedal on that as well, don't forget. Yeah. Like, they can just always backpedal on their backpedal. So <laughs> don't <laughs> rule that out. Point, you're, yeah. you're, you're pretty far back. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, yeah. It's a fixie bike, yeah, I get so. it. Uh, OK, let's talk about games then. First off, uh, Microsoft IP's Halo 5 Guardian was uh, shown off again last week, or we've seen more of it, I guess. Uh, what do you think they're going to do in relation to I'm going to ask you this, because I'm not a big Halo fan. Oh, Between so Halo they had the Guardian. teaser last year. They have announced the official title, yes. Halo 5 Guardian, and that it's not coming out till fall next year. Yeah. So 
it's just going to be some sexy trailer, I think. A quick one. It's going to yeah. be more than the teaser. If we're lucky, we'll get like 30 seconds of gameplay. Right. Yeah. But I'm not ex expecting a full like 10 minute long gameplay demo of a game that comes out at the end of 2015. Yeah. That's that's a long ways off. No, they're going to show they're going to they're going to show it and like wet our whistle for like the fiction of that and like what was that weird desert bird thing, you know, yeah. like cuz why is why is why is Master Chief wearing a poncho? I don't know, you tell me. <laughs> Who is that other character that it looked like a girl, but it's not apparently? It's, it's not. It's yeah. another male Spartan in the uh, box art they reveal, or yeah. I don't know if it's just a, a promo image yeah. or yeah. not. Uh, that's sort of the mirror of Master Chief. Who knows if that has thematic relevance or not? But like, you know, they're gonna have that. But that's not the only Halo thing that we're gonna see at the press Presumably conference. Presumably, if they're getting that stuff added away as well, then they're not gonna focus on it too much during the actual conference. You would think. Which? Uh, Halo stuff. The fact that they've announced oh. it a month before. No, they're definitely going to show yeah. Halo yeah. stuff at the conference. Yeah. Like, the, I, absolutely. And it's not, what my, I was referring to is not just Halo 5, but there's also uh, the, the collection, yeah. Halo collection, HD. which is Halo's 1 through 4 that's coming out for the Xbox One. So they're definitely going to show off some, like, some of those glamour shots of, like, oh, you jump into the system and there's the Halo. Now it's in <laughs> HD. That's the first time you ever saw it. Now yeah. it's in HD. Buy it again. Buy our system. <laughs> Don't you guys love Halo? Remember how it made us in the console world? Remember how this is yeah. the reason why we're still here? And so it was so powerful for them, for them last time around, and this time it seems like Bob Jones 1980 in the, in the chat just asked, what are Microsoft's exclusives now? So let's go through the ones they haven't, they own that they haven't announced. So Gears of War, first of all. Are we going to see some sort of Gears stuff, do you think? I think so, yeah. I mean, they've got that Vancouver studio working on it. Mm -hmm. They brought in Rod Ferguson, who worked on uh, Gears of War back at Epic. Yeah. So, I mean, they're definitely investing a lot into the Gears franchise. They bought that franchise from Epic. So I feel like they're at least going to tease it somehow, whether or not it's a full gameplay demo. Yeah. I have no idea. And if you figure it's an uphill battle for Microsoft this year, what's going to distinguish them? What's going to like gain them some ground against Sony? Exclusives is one of those big things. So rem so far, these are like, remind people yeah. why you bought that Xbox 360, why you bought that Xbox. Halo and Gears are two huge factors. Yeah, it's yeah. a bit of a shame that they're leaning on these old IPs they've had for a long time as well. Yeah, I mean, this would be the fifth game in the Gears yeah. franchise, yeah. counting Judgment. Oh, so, yeah. does it have a lot of sparkle left in it? Is it going to like I think so. Generate headlines? Go back, go back all the way, back to the beginning, and like just reinvigorate everything that we had when we first saw it. You want Emergence well, yeah. Day? Yeah, I want that. Like, yeah. I want that back a little, again. Just a little light oh, Emergence you'll, Day you'll get, you'll get <laughs> to get like people we, excited. Like we just saw with with Halo, you get something like that, you'll get. Marcus Phoenix in, a, in an overall. <laughs> Walking through the <laughs> desert. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's just Hold, carrying a briefcase yeah. on some the way pugs. to work. <laughs> like, that'll be it. Guarantee. <laughs> Confirmed. I'll put money on it. All right, speaking of new IP, uh, yeah. Quantum Break, uh, that's another sort of Microsoft tie-in. They've got all the, the game, and then they also have the, the weird TV show and stuff that's <laughs> happening. Yeah. I know you're a big, you know the guys at Remedy pretty well. I, I do really like the guys at Remedy, yeah. mostly just because they, they sent me to see them, so like a long time ago. <laughs> and, uh, got to meet the, the original Max Payne. Yeah, I even got him to do this. <laughs> yeah, the Max yeah. Payne face. Yeah, um, yeah. So, what do you think of uh, of Quantum Break? Um, I just like to see it because you know they they didn't do anything really last year. Like he kind of came on stage and mm. and it, it's what they've been doing. Like where every time they do a little tease, they do like a little video teaser going, "Hey, we." My name's Sam Lake at Remedy, and I'd like... It's pretty good, Sam Lake. <laughs> it's, it's not that good. That's, <laughs> a, good, that's a fine it's, finish it's good enough, yeah. <laughs> Don't sell yourself short, Seb Ford. <laughs> and, the, um, and they come on and like just go like, oh, we've been doing this, and we've been doing this, and they show a little bit more, a yeah. little bit more, but not much more. And last year's E3, they kind of didn't really show anything at all. They focus on the TV stuff a lot. Yeah. Or the, con the high concept. Sort of. So we've got to be really close to something pretty significant, right? Um, like the last video that they released made it look great. Yeah, like, and I want to play it. I really want to play it. Mostly just because the story's going to be incredible. Like the gameplay might be crap, but like the story's going to be incredible. Have, oh, it's the television stuff is a little bit strange because now it mm. seems like it's not coming out on Xbox first. They've sold it to like ABC or something. The Quantum Break specific the television stuff. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, it's getting released like simulcast or not just on. on well, regardless their of where that ends up, you are definitely going to see television as a big part of Microsoft's press conference yeah. because a because of yeah. the time with Quantum Break, but yeah. now they've announced their lineup for like, you know, that Spielberg Halo series. All these like they're, they've con they've contracted uh, original series. They've got pilots. They've got shows in production. There's a list of them that I, stuff that has nothing to do with video games too. Yeah, yeah. There's like reality shows. Yeah, there's like comedy shows. Street there's soccer an, documentary. This, yep, really? an, oh yeah. There's animated yeah. shows. And that was so. That was part of their. That's so much part of their like, Microsoft and Xbox One. We are like your ent whole entertainment yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. And so now I think they have to folk. They have to highlight that in a big way because the way that Xbox One integrates with TV and 
brings original content to the Xbox is going to be another big differentiator. But isn't that like the problem is that they've been banging this enter to this one box thing and then what happened was Sony came out and said screw all that we're just going to talk about games and show them up like yeah. it's the, all those parts of the conferences when they the Spielberg Halo yeah. stuff was so mind-numbingly boring. It's I mean like, the thing is like the two aren't mutually exclusive video games and entertainment stuff. They yeah. can do the entertainment stuff. They just have to not forget about video games like they've done for the past couple years. Yeah. I think as long as like Phil Spencer is saying a lot of the right things right now like we have to focus on games our E3 press conference is going to be about video games we've gotten away from that in the past and we're going to try to get back to it yeah so I, I mean honestly I'm fine with them working on the original stuff there could be some neat gems in there there could be some turds in there yeah probably yeah uh, if we're betting men and I think we are <laughs> um, like the weird thing is at least Sony is an entertainment company Microsoft have like no business about are television you saying that movies? Clippy yeah. wasn't entertaining Clippy <laughs> Clippy had some gems what's Clippy Clippy the little paperclip icon in oh, office. Oh, man. Right. Yeah. Come on, Are oh, you guys. saying it's going to be an animated <laughs> movie? Of, yeah. I see. I think you're... Are you writing a letter? It looks like you're writing a letter. <laughs> it's going to be a gritty, clippy <laughs> reboot. Games it's, it's just weird, isn't it? It's yeah. like yeah. Microsoft are making all this television stuff. Like, they've no skin in that game ever. I know. So like, I mean, they... Gonna... You know, the, the moment they decided to make the Xbox One a... You must have this, your one-stop shop for entertainment. Yeah. They put themselves in that game. They've made that leap. They're saying, you know, with this whole generation, even more than with the Xbox 360, well, they were trending towards it with the 360, and now they're obviously last year we saw they're going whole hog. They were showing off all the sports stuff, all the you know TV integration. All you plug your cable box into your Xbox, so yeah. it is literally yeah. Yeah. an integral part of your system. That that's their game now, whether they've got the pedigree or not. And I think they really have to and show us. Yeah, that. and let's not forget, Microsoft is a different company now than it was a year ago. There's a new CEO. There's a new president of Xbox. Yeah. There's new leadership. So I would imagine they've got new ideas. Hopefully, they're going to steer the ship in the right direction. Is it just that last year they needed to get the word out, like this is what we're going to be doing, and now that they're in E3 again, and the audience who's going to be watching E3, guys like us. Mm who don't give a crap, like, for the most part, about all of their entertainment, like, waff that they want to yeah. mm -hmm. throw in. They go, all right, the word's out on that. Now we can, like you say, Hopefully. focus on the games. I think they've been really bad at judging that mood. Yeah. I feel yeah. like they're pretty tone deaf yeah. when it comes to that. Hopefully, like, the, the maybe it was a very Don Matricky style push that they were doing, all, like, leaning into that stuff so hard. Uh, I don't know. I guess we'll find out. That's going to be probably the most interesting thing. Yeah. Uh, we've got a bunch of questions coming in. By the way, if you have any questions, send them in via the usual Twitch chat, GameSpot comments. Try and keep them to the section we're in. So we're going to have Sony up in a second. So if you have any questions about Microsoft, uh, send them in. Mm -hmm. Vitonic81 is asking, will Microsoft uh, try and pull a Sony card this year and hype up on indie games? Is that something that like they they need to do more now? Well, because so they started that program, that ID at I, Xbox yes. program, yeah. but so far they haven't released a lot of like super exciting indie games. I at think least Happy is probably because they had Super Time Force. Yeah, out like Super mm -hmm. Time Force, um, and they did like a re-release of Strike Suit Zero. Zero? Okay. Yeah, but like they sh they certainly haven't released like the breadth of indie games that Sony has. So they have a lot of catching up to do. I hope that they're going to push indie games hard at uh, E3, because Sony has shown that that approach can work really well, at least for garnering like goodwill in the community. Yeah, and also for, like, it's been pretty sparse this year, and with the amount of stuff that are being delayed until 2015, mm -hmm. like, the one thing that's kept me happy with the PS4 is that at least there seems to be indie games just yeah. making, you know, filling that gap a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Well, even in the past couple months, I mean, with Child of Light, with Transistor, like, yeah. you have these games that are, like, the most talked about games on the system, you know, for, for a chunk, significant chunk of, you know, the, our work-a-day week when we're, you know, talking about stuff all the time. And I think that they will see Sony's success with that. We'll see the fact that last year wasn't even the first time that Sony was really banging that yeah. drum, you know? Sure. They've been doing it. And so I think that is one page that they are definitely going to take out of Sony's playbook, it, is lean into talking about ID8. Because if they have the programs in place, you know, and they've got some movement on them, I think that it really behooves them to send that message like, look, we're doing this, guys. Yeah. Come to here. Come to us for yeah. indie games. Yeah, I mean, they too. know that they screwed up with indie developers toward the end of the Xbox 360. Yes. Whether they know how to, like, fix that situation, who knows? Yeah. But at least they're acknowledging their own faults. Yeah, there's massive problems with, like, getting games front and center on that dashboard. Yeah. And, favor of all the other business stuff they had. Um, a couple more games then before we, we finish up here. Uh, let's go pretty through these pretty quickly. Uh, Sunset Overdrive is coming out this year. It's one of the few games that's coming out this year. Hooray! You guys yeah. keep it people with orange soda. Yeah? yeah. I don't know. I mean, that's one of those games that it's like the, the way that it's being described is so bizarre, which is like Tony Hawk meets 
like Jet Set Radio Jet or Set something. Radio, yeah. and there's zombies, and there's like energy drinks and stuff like that. <laughs> Ted Price is involved. Like, yeah, but like I just can't wrap my head around that game without yeah. actually like picking up a controller because it's such a weird combination of ideas, and I feel like that's probably something that Insomniac and Microsoft are struggling with right now is just conveying what makes yeah. this game cool. Like you can show yeah. that game in action, but I think you. With a game like that, that's a little weird. Like you have to show, you have to show something that channels the player experience, so the yeah. players have something to hook onto. Otherwise, you just end there's up a like reason that. we've been making the joke that that game looks like a '90s Gogurt commercial. <laughs> it does, you know? It just has that over-the-top aesthetic, and it's easy to joke about, but yeah. it could be really fun to play. Sonic has a great pedigree. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Like okay. Crackdown was fun, so well, okay. What about <laughs> what about Crackdown Three? Yeah, could we see a Crackdown Three? Do you think? Uh, Crackdown 2 is kind of a wet fart of a game. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's I don't, just kind of more of the same. I mean, I would love to see yeah. a game on the caliber, on the level of Crackdown 1, yeah. which is yeah. excellent, refreshing, super fun. 1080, 60p, agent. Yeah. agent. 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 We need you to collect all these even better looking orbs. Jump to the top of a building, agent. Yeah. Uh, is, is, is Crackdown a product of its time? Could like a new, because it was very much like baby steps, open world, that era when everyone was just yeah. making... Or is, yeah, does, does a new Crackdown bring anything to the table, do you think? As long as it brings something new to the table, no, which is to. something that yeah. Crackdown 2 did not do. Yes. Mm -hmm. It was just a paint-by-numbers repeat of the original game. Yeah, I mean, with there's so many games now that are that you've got a prototype, there's Infamous, mm -hmm. there's these great super-powered open-world mm -hmm. games. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're really gotta, gonna have to carve out a significant niche if you want to bring that crackdown oh, yeah. game yeah. back. Yeah, it's but, a, the go niche. Yeah, the, the go Once you got that, then, yeah. Yeah. then you're in, you're shooting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a couple no more problem. before we finish up. Uh, Rise 2, any interest in a second <laughs> Rise? It, it, if where does this risen rumor, where again? did this rumor come from? Rise 2. Yeah. It's not gonna happen this soon. Because they never would have, because all that technology, it looks pretty repeatable. It looks like they can push oh, yeah. out another one of those. Did, yeah. did anyone get to the end of that game and go, I need more? I need, cry, the wait, Crytek people did. When will the, the follow-up? I'm pretty sure Kevin played that game like three times. He liked it. Yeah. Well, yeah. He liked it, but he gave it like a four or yeah. five or something. He's but really he just kept really. playing it because right. it's, it's a very It'll playable drive game. The connection. So Rise 2, if they've got the tech, they've got this, you know, they can render a beautiful Roman world. What yeah. should that game be? It shouldn't be the linear beat 'em up. Should it be? Uh, should it be a, a multiplayer melee game? Should it like? Should it be you know troop management? NMO. Like back back out to the supreme commander yeah. view, and you're like sending your phalanxes around. Yeah, I, I, guess. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I got no that, answer for that. Find out E3. <laughs> yeah. um, couple more. Uh, what a rare that we've Connect Sports rivals come out. When I was talking to them back a couple of months ago, it sounded very much like they were waiting for Microsoft to give them the opportunity to go back to one of their franchises. Yeah. What do you think would be a good play for them next? Should well, we at the beginning of the 360, they came out with Perfect Dark Zero, right? So let's fix that. Yeah? You, fix that. You that. want a Perfect Dark? Yeah, I'd love that. You want a yeah, more, but, but a more, good one. More perfect. Yeah. Not imperfect dark. Yeah. Not okay. a, that'll work for me. I think this is going to sound weird, but Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. <laughs> that was great. It was a very, it was a very open-ended game where you could like craft your own vehicle, yeah. and it had its own weird like behavioral patterns depending on how you assembled it. And I think that taps into a lot of what makes games like Minecraft appealing these yeah. days. Yeah. So I think now is a good time for them to bring that back and try to do it even better than it did before. Do you want to see some more Viva Pinata? Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> They made that game for children. There was a cartoon with it. It was a brilliant game. That, then it's perfect. But that right? game was not for, I feel like, whoever was making... That, that's Microsoft making the television show and thing again. Hmm. It's like the game with the TV show, and they uh -huh. were so, like, uncompatible. One was for five-year-olds, and one was for, like, 25-year-olds with loads of time. You'd get these stupid chocolate hamsters to have sex with each other. And those people <laughs> loved it. Yeah, yeah it was great, yeah. And, and those 25-year-olds are now <laughs> however old we are. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yes, you, they should bring back Viva Pinata. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that has super nostalgia value for a lot of people. And, you know, also that kind of open creativity mode. That, you know, I, mean, I reach out and I pick up my little... What's a dumb Viva Pinata animal name? Uh, the chocolate hamsters who have sex uh, yeah, with each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was yeah. Awesome. yeah. Pick good. up two chocolate hamsters <laughs> and mash them together. Yeah, That'd be great. Fable Legends. Uh, that one looks kind of interesting, mm. only because it's right. just not a fable game, though. Yeah. Like, why, why even call it a fable be game? Because it's set in Albion and looks like a fable game. And but it's why, a, like, a fable it's hero. And it's well, it's a dungeon crawler, though. It's not like a story. Choice yeah, driven RPG. It's like a co op way. dungeon crawler. It's so deep. But you can play as the villain. That's true. And you can mess with dudes. It's kind of got a little bit of the evolve thing if you squint hard enough and oh, really yeah. lie to yourself. 
Well, Evolve is a game we're going to talk about later. But oh, okay. uh, for now, thank you all, all right. for coming on and talking about Microsoft rumors, first party video games, and all that nonsense. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, thanks very much. Now, let's give away some stuff. Uh, we've got a bunch of. Uh, stuff? We, stuff? We're, we're going to give away some. We've given away some stuff, stuff, and we've got stuff, new stuff, stuff to give stuff. away. First of all, I want to say we've got all these chance. sweet Razer. That you hold the stuff. Hold the stuff. Hold the stuff. Give me the big one. Hold the stuff. We're giving away the yeah, mouse one. and that headset and the laptop yeah. together. Release, <laughs> release the Kraken. So yeah. we, we had a... Hold it up. And we got this one here. Yeah. So first, second, and third prize. Oh, sorry. Second, third, and fourth prize winning this. First prize wins a laptop and the two of these. We Whoa. don't have the laptop out here because it's in like a really boring looking box. Uh, thanks to Razer for sorting us out with those. We had a competition via our GameSpot Twitter account uh, earlier in the week. And later on, we're going to have a look at the winners of those. Uh, but for now, we also have a giveaway we did earlier in the week for Wildstar, uh, which is coming out today. I believe it's today. Uh, Kevin Van Oort's playing it. Have you guys been talking to him about it? No. Nope. At all? Nope. You haven't. He's been streaming no. it a ton, though. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so he's played yeah. a bunch of it. Um, so his review is, I guess, is a re review in progress probably going to go mm. up. Usually happens for the MMOs. Yeah, he's going to get that done before we head down to E3 because cool. there's a very slim chance he'll have a review finished by E3. That's right, yeah, good yeah. point. Uh, so we have uh, 10 copies of the digital deluxe version. Thanks to this. our friends at Carbine for that. Uh, do we have the names? Can we stick them up on screen now? All those we, we can't. Can I list? I can say them <laughs> with my with my. You, you save them, Seb. Uh, Danny, like I've I've always wanted to be on this show, and I like how I can uh, I can hear Mary in your ear going. Do we have the names? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I can just hear it. Yeah. <laughs> but peek behind say the, the curtain. names. <laughs> All right. These so are the, the winners. winners. <laughs> Fire and Fly one. Great. Fire, good yeah. work, Fire and yeah. Fly. Yeah. Right. Uh, there's also Very Raptor nice. Kitty, uh, Nanjana Seven, J Fuse Twelve Twelve. Mm -hmm. Can be 6870. I love that guy. Yeah. Uh, too much onesie. Unemployed <laughs> Jedi. <laughs> nice. I know, it's really hard. It's, uh, it's unemployed ex Jedi. Slim yeah. 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 Unemployed oh, ex Jedi. Ex -Jedi. He, ex -Jedi. He, Former he used Jedi. to be a Jedi yeah. when he was employed. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Things Maybe didn't work out for him. Yeah. Uh, H B M E Manuel. And uh, not Ant 1. And yeah, you can take the last no, one. No, that's yours. Naive <laughs> <laughs> no, V87. No, 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 what is. What is Naive. Naive. What's that in Irish? No, that's not an Irish. No, you're, <laughs> you're thinking of Neve, and that's not what that is. Say it. Neve 87. Neve 87. Longest giveaway ever. Thank you very much, Seb. <laughs> you're the best. Yeah. Uh, thanks Never for our friends at Carbon for that. Uh, yeah. Review of uh, Wildstar <laughs> will be out on GameSpot.com later yeah. in the week. And those folks, uh, make sure you're following us so we can send you those codes via DM. All right, we'll be back in a second. Microsoft's over. Next, we're going to talk about Sony. Let's go have a look at a Wildstar trailer. I want to tell you about a place. A place called Nexus. Nexus? I'm bloody right I heard of Nexus. A lost paradise it be. Hidden away for thousands of years. Till we found it. And hooray, it's nice having a place to settle down. I mean, it's about time that civilization be returned to the world. Nexus is our legacy. And it is imperative that we discover what happened to the Elgo. Once the most advanced race in galactic history, unlocking their secrets will now require total destruction. It's war, and it ain't gonna be pretty. See, the thing is... Nothing here is what it seems. Nexus has a terrible secret. For teen. Welcome back to GameSpot's E3 prediction show right here on the lobby. Danny O'Dwyer joined by Chris Waters. Now we've got Martin Gaston from the UK. Say something in an English accent. Oh, hello. Thank you, Martin. And of course, Justin Hale as well. Yes. GameSpot news editor. I don't Gentlemen, have a cool accent. You have a wonderful accent. You have accent. a wonderful cool accent. And I'm also, used to it. And you know lots about Sony, which is why I have you here. We're going to talk about Sony predictions. Yeah. They had a pretty good E3 last year, is that fair to say? They did. It was all right. It's still amazing that people are still talking about that. And you know that the PlayStation 4 is just kind of still going from that momentum of, 
of basically trouncing the Xbox One and like everything that Xbox said in their press conference. You know, Sony just came out and said, uh, "No DRM. Uh, yeah. You, know, you want to use used games? We're going to do that. Also, here's the price, and it's a hundred dollars less than their system, and it's still going strong." So, isn't didn't wasn't it more, maybe much of a case that last year all Sony really did was react to what Microsoft did badly? Well, they didn't even have to react. They just went, we're going to stay the same. You know the things you can do on PlayStation 3? That, that's also what PlayStation 4 does. We're just not going to blow it <laughs> like Microsoft did. All right! And they didn't. No. They didn't. They did not blow no. it. The best thing I heard at E3 last year, the best, and it's probably not even true at all, <laughs> is that there was like 100 different slides for that last slide of the price. They had rehearsed all kinds of prices because they were just sitting there waiting really? for the actual price. So they had it, they, they could have gone probably down to $5 <laughs> to a million dollars. They had slides for all of it. And as soon as Microsoft put it on, they were like, all right, that one. And they went with that. And I don't know if that's true, but I want it to be true because that's the spirit that Sony has now. And I love that. It's Maybe it's more like in sitcoms where you film multiple scenes of an angle or multiple angles for a different scene with different characters just so nobody really knows except for the person on stage who's going to reveal it. Well, like even the the trailer they had where they did the how you share games with your friends where it was Adam Boys and Shu just handing the game to each other. That was yeah. recorded the day before the press conference in the backstage area behind the stage. We spoke about that at Gamescom, yeah. didn't we? And that video has got like millions of views. Like yes. to, to put it into perspective, like Sony has teams and teams of people who work full time putting together promotional videos. And spending millions. And spending millions, yeah. and they, they yeah. sit in meetings for like weeks and weeks going, oh, I guess we'll do this shot and then we'll do this shot. And then suddenly these two executives go, meh. And you're like, boom, and the view count just it's like, shoots It's like 19 up. million views or something on YouTube. It's incredible. It's but we've had a whole year for Xbox to, to turn things around. Like, yeah. they have changed their policies. They've mm -hmm. finally reduced the price. They've gotten rid of Kinect, which nobody really cared about anyway. So, I mean, going into this E3, Sony just can't do the, the same thing again because they don't have a Microsoft to react against who's just being batshit insane. They, they have to do something. And what do they have to do? But if they're, uh, so there's no, like, punch back, right? There's no, there's no, they're, they're not set up for this kind of dramatic uh, moment in the way. And I don't think that, you know, that's one of the most dramatic moments per your E3 mm. memorable moments video that I think we've seen at any E3. Yeah, yeah totally. But, I mean, do you think they could get away with just staying the course, you know, with... Showing the same kind of ratio of big games to indie games to PlayStation now to, you know, living room stuff. And then could they just sort of carry it on and not, not lose, a, lose their footing? Well, for me, the PlayStation Now price is something that's going to be really important. And that's some place where we don't really know what Xbox is going to do. They've been talking about making the Xbox One compatible with, you know, previous games. Mm. And the PlayStation's answer has been whatever PlayStation Now is going to be, whatever that price is going to be. And if it's something you know that's tied in with PlayStation Plus, which we already have a subscription to, like that'll be awesome, and that will be a huge bombshell. Like you just have access to these games because you're a Plus subscriber, making that even sweeter. But if they make it something, if, if Xbox comes out and says, and we're going to make all of our XBLA content uh, available if you're an Xbox Live subscriber, yeah. but PlayStation goes, and here's a separate service, and it's twenty dollars a month, but you get access to old games. Uh, that's not going to be quite the, the same all right. uh, impact. Well, let's talk about the actual games. The first party stuff that they can bring to the table. Uh, first of all, I want to talk to Martin about Drive Club. Yeah. This, yeah. So, you, so you went over to the studio only a couple of weeks ago, I right? It's a Roncorn. Where's Roncorn? It sounds like Liverpool. a planet. Oh, it's really? in Liverpool. Really? Yeah. Nice. It's How was magical. that? Um, it rained real Were the bad. the Beatles there? <laughs> the spirit of the Beatles okay. was there. Go uh, for it. Did any of you play Drive Club last year? No. no. Okay, I'm going to be I'm gonna be honest. It was bad. Okay. It was a bad game. <laughs> It last, wasn't fun. Last year or, or recently? Last year. At E3 okay. last year, it, it, it was a bad game. Okay. It wasn't fun. The handling was all messed up. And it just didn't, it didn't have anything. So when they were like, oh, do you want to come to Runcorn and play Drive Club? Hmm. I was like, yes. But <laughs> when I last played, this game wasn't very good. And they're like, oh, it's better now. And I'm like, eh, whatever. <laughs> and so, you know, we go up there and I'm playing it. And I'm like, it's actually better now. It <laughs> is better now. Now, I find hashtag drivy club, hashtag drove club, <laughs> I find the whole thing about it a, a bit difficult. Yeah. Like, I don't think with all this, like, social thing, I don't think that actually really matters. Yeah. Like, I think that's to be expected now. That's, like, uh, an expected feature. Yeah. Multiplayer in some aspects, yeah. like leaderboards and stuff, is, like, part and parcel of driving games. Yeah. So, leading on that, I think, is a bit silly, because everyone's going, like, oh, yeah, but, you know, whatever. Yeah. Driver tires. You know? yeah, yeah. Like, 
And at least the driver tire things is something, right? That's yeah. something new. So that's something Forza has. But the the handling of Drive Club was was really fun. Mm. It was it was a fun game to play. And I want it, I really want it to, to do well. Because I also believe that if it doesn't do well, but does Sony those really need on? Yeah. <laughs> they, they are out of there. Do they need an, another driving uh, franchise like that? They have Gran Turismo, Need for yeah. Speed yeah, does all have, the arcade have, stuff. They have one Gran Turismo every 17 years, <laughs> right? That's, and in 2029, what, what when Polyphony the new one comes do? out, it's gonna be fantastic. It's, it's gonna be great. Well, but they'll release two demo versions first, full price, and yeah. then eventually. Prologue right? and Prolapse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's Perfect. what they'll do. Uh, but I think an arcade racer is a good thing to have. Like the last Eva Speed, uh, yeah. and there's not one coming out this year. I think a first party arcade racer is a good thing for Sony to have in, in their stable. Yeah. If you will allow me to use that probably horrible executive buzzword. <laughs> uh, but it's not the lead. It's not like no. the it's not the crown no. so jewel, what is, right? What? So it's in there, but they it's not gonna I feel like you can only see so it, it's so hard to dazzle with something like that. So what is then for Sony? Is it like the a last big card? Planet card is it like what, <laughs> what's the what's the power card at this stage? Because uh, like we, Media Molecule might be working on something we don't know. Uh, presumably they are rare or probably well, working. So Media Molecule has come out and they've said we're not going to show anything at, at E3. At E3. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Media Molecule. I mean, they so, had that really cool direct when you you know when the PlayStation Four was announced with like that kind of weird music was game. It, yeah. It was the vaguest the, like, description of a game thing. I've ever seen. Where yeah. you make the game by doing this. So what it, what's the big one now? Is it like, is it Deep Down or is it Project Beast or is it like, is it Last Guardian? Because I, well, yeah, I, all I keep hearing is the Last Guardian is like, well, because seems to this be a is real what good the, set for this year. This is like the seventh year that they haven't talked about the Last Guardian. But this is the one year where it sounds like it actually might be shown. It's, it's either there this year. Yeah, or it's gone. Or it's not happening. <laughs> yes, totally. Yeah, yeah. Okay, they either, they either took it away a couple of years ago and said, guys, Make it a PS4 game, and PS, try not to, you know, not finish it again, <laughs> uh, or it's gone. Yeah. That, that is what I believe. I, I mean, I don't know, but I, it must be. That, mu that makes sense, right? Yeah. That makes sense. So it, yeah. if it's going to be there, That would make sense why be there it hasn't year. been here. Exactly. Why they held off on it for exactly. so long. And if it's going to be there, it's going to make a splash. I mean, you could show something that is essentially no longer or more complicated than what we saw so many years ago, and I think people mm. would still freak out with delight and anticipation because they're finally getting it. Dude, I would feel so wiggly. <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, oh my god, <laughs> That's really I'm happening. freaking out. That's one of the things that makes this so so exciting, though, is yeah. that uh, you know, amidst all of these leaks that we've had, that Battlefield Hardline, all of the yeah. like, the whole trailer for that's come out, so mm -hmm. many of these games we already know about, whereas Sony, like, wh what are these studios working on? Yeah. They have so many internal studios. So, like, are they keeping it a secret? That's awesome. Just got a question here from Mortar, who's asking, new uh, God of War, what do you think? Like, what are Sony, Sony Santa Monica working on? They have to... Well, they've got Corey back. Corey, Corey uh, Hayne? Corey, Corey Hayne. Yeah. Right. Corey Booker, actually. <laughs> mayor of New York. It's Balrog, Balrog, right? It's Balrog. I always don't... I always, I always know his son is Balrog, and I'm like, no, Balrog is... Is that, is that is monster it, is from is Lord of the Rings? Mortal Kombat, <laughs> that's him. He's yeah. yeah. a, a character. I must be wrong yeah. with that name, but no, it is. They've got, he, he's got him back. He was like the God of War 2... Dude, and God of War 2 is the best one. But like, <laughs> there's the others. Yeah. There's God of War 2, right? It's, <laughs> so to have him back <laughs> is really good. And I want it to be a new IP. Like, I want you know, maybe, maybe like a spiritual successor or something, mm. but like... God of I'm, War karting. God of peace! Goddess God of, of war. Goddess of war, <laughs> yeah, fine. Go, God of war karting, fine. Just something. <laughs> like, something new. But, but they, they've got him back, and that's got to be exciting. Well, we talked about exclusives so much with Microsoft. Yeah. I mean, what are the Sony exclusives? Like Uncharted, God then? of War is a huge one, and of course, Uncharted, which mm. we're like all but guaranteed to see yes. a significant amount of. And don't forget, with this Uncharted, now that they've got the... They've got Neil Druckmann and Bruce Strady back, yeah. mm -hmm. and they're overseeing it. They can now go from the creators of The Last of Us. Oh yeah, they can yeah, now yeah. Go from the That's creators true. of The Last of Us, the new one shot. Because I actually think what's happened now is The Last of Us is is the bigger game. Yeah, I think it's got right. more cachet the, with with, yeah. uh, with core gamers anyway. And you have everyone going, oh no, the creators of Elmac. But I don't like, want more Last of Us. Like I, I want that to be a standalone experience that's 
that's just oh, yeah. there. Like, yeah. That was a great experience. Now please do something different. I think tonally oh. they're pretty much like on opposite ends of the spectrum mm -hmm. as well. One's like this bombastic action trope, you know, or, or you know, adventure, and then the other one is a depressing slog. Of well, and, and there's so many things they're going to be able to take from that that work really well in The Last of mm. Us, like yeah. from the shooting mechanics. Yeah, mechanically, it's wonderful. And putting those in Uncharted, like, oh, finally, please, finally, you're going to fix all of these things that really? I really you don't want you want you want Drake to be more of a like really got to work hard to like land a shot, not his like freewheeling yeah. like pop it up. I, pop I don't want to walk into a room and go, style. oh, here's 50 enemies that you have to kill on mm. then. 40 more. Yeah, just kind of. Speaking of walking uh, yeah. into a room and killing 50 enemies, will there be a new kill zone this year? I hope not. No. No? I hope not. One, because I don't like kill zone. What are Gorilla working on then? They've, they've been working on a new IP mm -hmm. for ages. Okay. Like they've been saying, oh, we've got our new IP, guys, since like 2010. Yeah. <laughs> like, they've been doing this a long time, so it's going to be yeah. good. Last Guardian. <laughs> <laughs> It's actually set on Telegas. It's except, the last Guardian. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, except yeah. now it's actually the, the Guardian animal thing is actually some sort of Nazi and you, you, have to you kill it. it, you blow up its home planet, but you're the good guys. <laughs> and you wear its head. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. That story worked really well for Killzone. I don't see why they would not want yeah, yeah, to exactly. replicate yeah. it. Yeah. The rich fiction of genocide, Killzone. Right? Yeah, it's it's yeah. so hot right now. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag genocide. genocide. Killzone coming soon. Um, let's talk about hardware for a second. Vita. Are they going to show off stuff for the Vita? Where, where is the Vita at the moment? Like 3DS is selling really well. Vita seems to have it seemed dead in the water real early, and I feel like in the past six to nine months, since the PlayStation 4 has come out, it's actually been given a new lease of life. That PlayStation Plus, the, the you know, giving people free games. Like if you own a PlayStation 3, hmm. there's no reason not to own another piece of this hardware because you're just getting free games every month for it as well. And I think that's actually something that's helped the Vita a lot. But y there's got to be some new games, some new cool stuff that they're going to show. And I'm really hoping for something like Parappa the Rapper, like oh, bringing yes. back, like a really cool music purely music focused experience. Yeah, what other type of old IPs like that? Like will we see oh God, this is so horrible uh -oh. to even say. Will we see a wipeout? That's horrible to say. <laughs> no, I no, just it's feel not like horrible to say. But like will they pull it away because they've obviously shut down, you know, talk about Sony yeah. studios in Liverpool that might be on their last breath. Like they shut down those guys, they slow down that IP. It seems like they release a new wipeout game every couple of years anyway. Yeah, I don't know about the Wipeout franchise, but I do think that there is going to be a ton of Vita stuff Jeez, at this press stuff. conference. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no Wipeout. Uh, I'm what, not a big Wipeout. Motorstorm. Do you? Uh, do you have any? Uh, Motorstorm last year was really good. Yeah. yeah, but then that wasn't okay. Yeah, what about a new uh, new Motorstorm game for the PS4? Is there a racing hunger for that? Games, I feel like racing games don't, well, they don't grab me, I'll yeah. say. I said it with Drive Club, and I, I don't know how much of that is my own personal perspective versus just like they occupy such a specific niche. Although, when you talk about the niche between Drive Club and Motorstorm, it's not that specific. It's pretty broad. Yeah, what, Little Big Part Karting 2, Little Big Planet Karting 2, Mod Nation Racers. Why are you on this karting kick? I don't know, because Sony seemed to be. They released, freaking, they released three so karting games in one America month. Yesterday, well, you right? saw That's how Mario true, Kart we did have a blast. Did Mario Kart did really well. Got yeah, to capture that lightning in a bottle. Fair enough. Do uh, you think they'll announce a PS4 Vita bundle? That, I, that was a rumor last year yeah. that never came to fruition. I think that was wishful thinking last year, more than a rumor. But I think if I we've know. learned anything from the past year, it's, it's maybe not to bundle all of your stuff. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> like, like, yeah, if they did a bundle, yeah. it, it would be a hundred, two hundred dollars more expensive. More, yeah. And that would kind of defeat the whole like, oh, we're cheaper than Xbox One, which they've already aren't quite there anymore. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. Dark Souls mm -hmm. ripoffs. Project Beast deep down. Maybe it's unfair to say that about those games. Project so. Beast is Well, no, you it, it can't call it a ripoff. It's from from yeah, the yeah, software. Yeah. It's from from. From from. Yeah. It's the most exciting game I've seen in ages, and all I've seen is some weird gifts. Yeah. So <laughs> four channel leaks. I am I am so ready to see the game. And that's that's a very E3 game, if you ask me, because, you know, I mean, all of us sitting there watching E3, we're, you know, that's the kind of game that is, would be made to appeal to us. That, that is, again, you know, Tom McShay. It's not for the newspapers. Tom McShay will be doing backflips around the GameSpot <laughs> He gets room. so <laughs> agile whenever Dark Souls is mentioned. He will be it's losing incredible. his... Mind. If that <laughs> happens and Spelunky 2 is announced uh, for Vita, uh, he might just lose his goddamn mind. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. Um, well, one thing I don't think we're going to see at all is Project Morpheus. We saw that, you know, yeah. at GDC. Do you think they're not going to show not much about it? Not going to show it at all, huh? No, I, if they do, maybe it'll be over at the booth. Like, here's, you can try out the thing that we showed off at GDC, but So for I, the people who don't early. know, this is their virtual reality headset proprietary one that they're making themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, has there been much in the way of, like, 
discussions about how that is that going to be specifically for the PlayStation yes. infrastructure? Well, like, are they going to go down the PC route? Or is it? You know, they, they haven't talked about it a lot. Um, I, I would assume that this is going to be a PlayStation 4 only kind of device. This isn't yeah. going to be coming to yeah, PC. Yeah. But, you know, we don't really know. Presumably, though, if they're doing that, then they're going to have to, like the Kinect, they're going to have to make software reasons for people to buy it. Mm -hmm. Like, they're going to have to start making games that are made either specifically for or at least are additive with the with the Morpheus. Do you see that being a section in the press conference, maybe? Not at the, not at the press conference. Like I, I think the press conference is going to focus on the, the more immediate, the now and the yeah. 2015. And this stuff mm -hmm. isn't going to be ready by 2015. Even I, Oculus isn't. Mm -hmm. I just don't think we'll see any Morpheus. In fact, what, what I think we'll do is they'll, they'll talk about how well the PlayStation has done. They'll have yep. a new slide. No, they can't do the numbers thing again. They stopped doing that last year. Where they no, spend no, they'll 15 be like, minutes of pie charts. They'll, they won't, they'll, they'll show some minutes. numbers. They will just go. Their numbers are too good not to show. Sold, yeah, they'll go and sell 9 million. No, it's because I mean, let's, let's move on. But 9 million is million. Shit and million. sold. Yeah, and then they, they will just move on. So they'll, they'll update with that and they'll talk mm -hmm. about how you know they, they've got the present sorted and there will be a bit of the like, and we're also, you know, we're investing in the future and then like a Morpheus thing will appear in the background and now yeah. we're still sort of making it so they'll move on to, to <laughs> Lawrence Fishburne will come out sitting on a chair that does not look dissimilar to this yeah. one a man can and say yeah well he, he likes to shill <laughs> um, what else Sony I'm trying to think there was one thing I'm tipping my tongue there and it's gone it's gone, gone, gone. there's a bunch of Sony questions there's a bunch of Sony questions <laughs> thank you the voice in my head oh Crash Bandicoot question mark good call <laughs> Yeah, I would love it. I Look, would love you're the it. one who said Parappa the Rapper might come back. I, I, I'm a bigger fan. I, I'm a rhythm game fan. Like, okay. if, if Dance Central or, or Rock Band came back, like, I would buy more guitar peripherals just to play Rock Band. I love music games. Uh, more platforming. That's that's what I play Mario for. That's what I wanted to ask. Sorry, I got it back now. I got my mojo back. Last year there was a bunch of weird indie games that came out of nowhere. That Shadow of the Beast announcement was the strangest thing oh, I've ever seen in my life at Gamescom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What other weird, do you think there's gonna be any more weird indie yeah, stuff? Do, yeah. Oh, I absolutely. Do, yeah. It's all gonna be yeah. AAA indies now. But yeah. like, I'm, I'm wondering is there gonna, cause there's a lot of indie games that at the moment have like, like No Man's Sky, which nobody knows what platform they're coming out on. Do you think it might be a, a thing where both Microsoft and Sony are gonna try and grab some of those for timed exclusives? I really do. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. And indies were such a huge part of, of their messaging last year. They're, they're going to continue to to embrace that. I think we're going to see even more cool indie stuff that, that they, both Microsoft and Sony have been able to snatch up. And, and I really don't want yeah. it to be exclusive. I want it to come to as many platforms as possible because I want to be able to play it on everything. Well, I think the phrase timed exclusive is totally one we're yeah. going to hear a lot Absolutely. or at least is going to be true about a lot of games this year. Because I feel like with so many of these indie games, you're past the point where uh, one company is just buying them outright. Yeah. You know, there's like, look, on the balance, you know, if we can get exclusivity for the first three months and that's when people are hyped about it, that's going to give us a significant share. And then, you know, who knows what the, the business logic is behind it for the creator and for the publisher. But I think timed exclusives are much more a thing that you see with this caliber game. And certainly something that both the, those two, these two big publishers are going to be leaning hard into for E3. It works great for them because Sony or Microsoft can offer them promotion. They mm -hmm. can say, look, we can put you bang in the center of, the, of our respective stores and people will, you know, pr like visibility is, is a big deal for, for people making, you know, smaller games and, yeah. and understandably so. And do you remember when, do you remember when Summer of Arcade was good? Yeah. Oh. Like years and yeah. years and years ago when Halcyon Xbox Live Summer, Summer of Arcade was, was, was <laughs> actually good. Microsoft before must be thinking. Before the days of Kingdom for Keflings. <laughs> <They're pretty much laughs> yeah. pretty when when that killed it. Yeah. Reketeer came So along. getting back to that. Because even like, and the funny thing is, the poster child for the success of Microsoft Indies, a lot of the time was Super Meat Boy. And that game actually had a really torrid time trying to get exposure on, yeah. on that service as well. But, but just when you'd have like Geometry Wars 2 and Shadow Complex yeah. and other games, I'm forgetting <laughs> because there's lots of lights on me. Uh, Trials HD, you know, the, yeah, the, yeah. when Summer Arcade was good, it was so good. And I long, I know this is the Sony bit, but just for either of those things, you know, maybe Sony can have Autumn of PlayStation Store or whatever, <laughs> I don't know, but like fall, something. Fall, fall. <laughs> fall, sorry. Yeah, sorry. And, and in we're American not going to know what's good until, until we get there. Like, those yeah. are the games you have to try out. Like, you, you see the demo and you're like, well, that's kind of quirky and fun. But then you play it and you're like, oh my god, this is so awesome. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right, gentlemen, thank you so much for coming on, talking a bunch of Sony mess. Uh, Microsoft and Sony are probably going to be the most interesting out of the two of them, especially after what happened last year. Uh, there's been a bunch of games announced and leaked over the past month, one of which actually, bizarrely, we had um, uh, Jeff Gersman from Giant Bomb on the couch about two weeks ago. And you remember at the end of that segment, 
I said, what's the game you're looking forward to most at E3? Mm -hmm. And he says, you know, but I can't tell you. Yes. Well, apparently a trailer was released for it this week. So uh, we'll be back in a second with some chat about Nintendo. But first of all, here's the trailer for the new Mortal Kombat. Combat X. Everyone do X's. I can't believe X. That's, X. that's our intro to talking about Nintendo. Yeah. Seriously? Uh, <laughs> uh, Nintendo. Yes. We like to keep it nice and uh, chalk and cheese on, on, on the lobby here. Uh, I'm joined today by Tom McShay and Jess McDonald and Ed Tran. Hi, Danny. How you doing? What's up? Good. How are Thank you? Thank you very much for coming over to San Francisco pre E3 and Just hanging to out with us. talk about no Nintendo. Problem. Yeah, we're going to talk about Nintendo projections for E3. Uh, hands up if you own a Wii U. Are you kidding me? What? I, <laughs> I thought you were new. You play so much Wii U in the office. I play so much Wii U. What? I play so much Wii U. That's the thing that's funny. That's really embarrassing. <laughs> well, whatever. <laughs> so Nintendo historically have done press conferences like uh, Microsoft and Sony. Uh, this year, much like last year, they are opting to have their own little sort of soiree off to the side. Yeah. Um, Tom, are Nintendo relevant in the grander scheme of video games? S still. Yes. Next question. <laughs> no, they totally are. Like I know what you mean. Is like. <laughs> Nintendo have always been sitting on the periphery and sort of doing their own thing, but now it seems like they're really, like the periphery is like over there. They're having a hard time. They're having a hard, but they're still Nintendo. That's they right. still got their franchises. Mm. And to be honest, I think as much as we would all love to say and keep saying, IP, new IP from Nintendo yeah. would be so cool. I think at the same time, we're all kind of like, yeah, I would totally buy a great new Zelda game, mm, and yeah. I totally just bought Mario Kart. Yeah. And I think I think Nintendo know that. I think like they're kind of like, oh yeah, IP is gonna happen, but I, I I wonder if it's ever going to be not just about the big franchises. Well, everyone complains about Nintendo's like core franchises and like not inno innovating or whatever. Yeah. yeah. But they always innovate like within those franchises. So yeah. like Mario always does something new each time. Uh, Mario Kart has like more well, items. <laughs> <laughs> items. See, you're you're not, Zelda is a cartoon. Yeah, the first, second hurdle. <laughs> so we we've seen it in the UK. I think the sales for the Wii U hardware have gone up 600 percent week on week. Yeah. Uh, off the back of Mario Heaps. Kart. So do you think like that's all they need to do? Like you no. you reviewed Mario Kart. For <laughs> I mean, it was this, it's the same figures when um, Super 3D Mario World. Yes. I can't remember the name of that game. Super Mario 3D <laughs> World <laughs> came out last year. <laughs> it went up like 600 percent, but yeah. it's like. It, without the steady flow, you're going to get the the hardcore, and then you know some of the the ancillary fans getting it. But yeah. the system still only sold like seven million worldwide. Like it's yeah. not it's not a popular system right now. So okay, let's talk about games. What games could they make that would or announce this year that would get people to hop back on board? On the Wii U? On the Wii U specifically? Absolutely nothing. Really? I don't. It's it's so hard yeah. to turn around public perception, and at this point, it's like oh, it's old hardware, and it doesn't do anything that much. Mm. 
new or different, and I think that they're they're in a position where they kind of need to release new hardware sooner rather than later, which is super sad. I mean, I feel like they're they're in a place where if Mario Kart 8 wasn't gonna do it, I don't yeah. think anything else so, is gonna uh, do it. You don't own Super one. Super Smash Brothers mm. yeah. would yeah. be good. Well, okay, so my thing is, I am one of those people who will buy a system if there's games on it that I want. And uh, yes. there can be, because uh, Nintendo had that whole thing where they were like, look, one game can make a system. Mm -hmm. And I actually buy into that. I got the 3DS for The Legend of Zelda, Link yeah. Between Worlds, so because good. it was phenomenal. It was my yeah, favorite was game called. of last year. Okay. Yeah. Okay. GameSpot's 2013 game. I bought right. it because it was a gold 3DS with a Triforce <laughs> on it. But yeah, yeah, I bought it in the bundle, and that's why I'm not surprised so many people got the Wii U with the Mario Kart. What did they say? 75% um, of sales of that title in the UK were bought within the bundle. Oh, wow, really? People yeah. being like, yep, yeah, all right, I'll buy a Wii U yeah. now. But I kind of agree. I think, I, I, I think they might be at the end of the rope. You so you, you, you can't say that Mario Kart 8 isn't a fantastic game. No, it's, it's sure. really fantastic. It's probably the Please. second best console Mario. But what Kart. else can they do yeah. now uh, for release. the Wii U? Okay, uh, so you already own yeah. one, right? So Jess, you don't. Yes, you might. If there is a game that might. Yeah, your interest. What would that game be? <sighs> a, a new Zelda, for instance. So I had the my Nintendo 64, Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time is like. My baby. Yeah. Like, I, if I could have that kind of experience on a Wii U, yeah, I'd probably buy one. I think if I was a Mario Kart 8 person, then I would have bought Mario Kart 8 bundle. That mm. would have been my thing. But yeah, at the same time, it's kind of dating right now. The Wii U, like, it, next to the Xbox One and the PS4. Mm. Yeah, the like, if they announce a new Zelda, I'll still be quite skeptical because I did not enjoy either of the Wii Zeldas. Yeah, ever. see, that's oh, really? true. Yeah. I enjoyed uh, Link Between Worlds, okay. yeah. and I love my I love Wind Waker, but okay. not a fan. So, what what would you like to see as a fan and an owner of a of a Wii U? Mario Galaxy Three, perhaps? really? Yeah, oh, man. Mario more, Sunshine more Two. <laughs> space. We had a bunch space. of people in the comments see, asking for Mario Sunshine. I, yeah, two. but Sunshine was also <laughs> very good. Need that flood pack back. See, I'm in the exact. I, I don't ever want another Galaxy because I think oh, Galaxy really? Two is basically perfection. I gave it a ten. Oh. Mm. Okay. I don't think you can make a better game. I, I defy every developer <laughs> out there to make a better 3D platformer. I don't think it's possible. Three words for the okay. best Nintendo strategy. Year of Waluigi. Oh, no. <laughs> now, so then the messed up thing is that now we've got all these weird like rap videos with Luigi, and this is much more hype than you ever got in this actual year of Luigi. Uh, so it looks like a new Zelda is, seems to be like a dead set. Like There's See, I, so much well, rumor about I this. I don't think the new Zelda will be Wii U exclusive if it comes to Wii U. This is my, this is my really? crazy Whoa. prediction. Whoa. So here's the thing. What could it possibly come out on? <laughs> Their next platform. I, I get really Whoa. bummed out when people don't have a chance to buy an awesome exclusive game. And there's like 7 million Wii U's out there. So Wii U Zelda would not sell that much. <laughs> so I think if it does yeah. come yeah. out, yeah. it'll yeah. be oh. like Twilight Princess, <laughs> how it was cross-generational. Mm. And then it was, it was for Wii mm. and for but Twilight Game Princess Cube was shown at like E3 three years running or something, wasn't that? The, like they yeah. just they kept it, it debuted in E3 2005 and then came out a couple years later yeah. yeah, or something like that. I don't know. But it's like, I, I, don't, I think that if Zelda went to the Wii U alone, it would almost be amazing and then wither and die there yeah. without like people playing it. And that makes me sad. So are you on board with the there might be hardware this year or I I, I do I think I think oh they yeah, need to, okay. I think they need to come out with something next next year or something right. and they need to start start doing stuff. Yeah. Let's talk about their other hardware and then the 3DS. The 3DS is doing wildly right. successful yeah. Yeah. like ever since the DS Lite came out and kind of before that as well that console that hand has just dominated the handheld market. Um, how what do you think is next for the 3DS? Is it still fine as a piece of hardware itself? Uh, who owns who owns a hands up going to 3DS? See, I don't, but I always have the office one. Yeah, yeah. So you, yeah, you have all the time. Do you have an N64? This is what happens. <laughs> I have every other Nintendo console. Hey, do you play video games? Do you have a Wii Fit? I play so many video games. That's the thing that's crazy. Uh, the 3DS is weird because it has one awesome game every like three months, but then yeah. it kind of. So that's how I feel about. Uh, that's how I feel about the Wii U. Like, yeah. as, right. as, as someone who owns it's like Nintendo. multiple consoles, I'm okay with having one big Wii U game every yeah. once in a while. Yeah. Because um, Mario Kart 8 is like. Just not the fu most fun game this year. I don't right. think I've yeah. played anything that much. Yeah. But yeah, then there's gonna be a dry spell, and then yeah. So are you, are you guys still are you guys still playing with your 3DS? What have you played most recently? That like the game that we're showing right <laughs> now, yeah. that Kirby game, yeah. is amazing. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love polished. that. I got 100 yeah, percent, and I didn't even review it. I just mm. plowed through the game. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean, I'm like I'm big on the major franchises, and I'm the same. Like I'm happy to just I'm stuck with uh, Link Between Worlds. I was playing yeah. because it's my handheld. 
game. So I was playing that between at the same time as playing games on my PC. Yeah. And um, yeah, and that's fine. And I'll, I'll go through and I'll play that for a few weeks or however long it takes. And then I'm, I'm kind of okay to put aside a handheld console for a while yeah. and just be like, okay, well then, and now I'm like, okay, cool. Well, I want Pokemon, so then yep. I'm gonna I'm gonna get on the bandwagon really late, and I've gotten myself Pokemon, yeah. and it's like, well, now I'm gonna play that for a while, and because I've got a Vita as well, which sort of does the same thing. Vita's it's like, let's good. play sometimes, and then there's uh, not any games I want for a while. So yeah. there's like a thing, uh, Nintendo's having like a 90 minute conversation with the press yes. about mm. a 3DS game. <laughs> Just one. One of them, there's gonna be two of these things. One of them is for Smash Brothers, we already know. The other one's okay. unannounced. Yeah. Okay. So there's like a, a game that warrants a 90 minute discussion coming out of the 3DS that we don't know about. What That's would you crazy. hypothesize that would be? Well, it's it's obvious to say like, oh, I want a new IP. I'm like, I want Metroid. Metroid. Yeah. I want yeah. Metroid Absolutely. really bad. Okay. I, that's all I want is a new Metroid. It's been years, and the Ninja Theory yeah. one had a questionable story elements. Yeah. No more Mario um, suits. No there's lots of more Mario suits, suits yeah. that you don't turn on until the man tells That's you. That's right. You turn <laughs> on. There's a lot, lots of uh, chat about a uh, new Metroid. Uh, yeah. Mio yeah. asking, do you think new Advance Wars? Oh my God. That'd be great. Fire Emblem came out last year. That's also Intelligent Systems. Yeah. And Fire Emblem, I don't know if you guys played it. Yeah. It was, it was amazing. Yeah. I'd never played one before and I loved it. So I think yeah. the strength of that, yeah, maybe more tactics games like that. Yeah. That yeah it's that's perfect so for the handhelds. Yeah. I it's would, such I would a love good that. system, like just as it I is. Know. Like I, I really, I do prefer the 3DS to the Vita. Like mm. the way it feels, it's just like it's such a solid piece of hardware, and I think that's always going to run in the 3DS's favor. So do you think they're going to like maybe maybe that's what happens? Maybe they just focus more on the 3DS instead of the the Wii? Because the problem the Wii U has at the moment is that it's not just like like exactly like you said, the, the 3DS is fighting the Vita, the Wii U is fighting yeah, the yeah. PS4, the yeah. Xbox One, the yeah. two old that's generation right. ones, and the PC. Well, as my well. whole my whole thing is I want want them to kill both the 3DS and the Wii U at the same time and then release a new system. This is a terrible. <laughs> and release a that new system. They integrate. Some people <laughs> just want to see the world yes. burn. It's a portable <laughs> system that plugs into your TV. So because all, yeah. right now you have all these Nintendo teams competing against themselves basically because it's like they're making a Zelda on the portable and a Zelda on the console. And it's just like if they could all be in one place and there's just one Nintendo platform and it's got every yeah. amazing game you could ever want. It's crazy. Right, that sounds pretty good it's to crazy. me. You're crazy. I know, it's just crazy you're enough crazy. to work. Just... <laughs> Ed, you own a Wii U. Yes. Name a Wii U game that's coming out this year that you're excited about. Smash Brothers. Okay, name a second oh, one. Smash Brothers. Smash Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> the big Is one the for me, Bayonetta 2. Okay, oh, Bayonetta 2. Oh, yes, it's my apologies. Super giddy yes. about Bayonetta 2. Uh, Hyrule Warriors as well, isn't that Not as giddy yeah. about that. No? That's an no, odd one. Good. It sucks because it's like Hyrule. Uh, oh, oh, you It's interesting though because that one was so metric ton of consoles in Japan. Yes. Really? And yeah. the Wii U is they selling. They love the Dynasty Warriors. Okay. Oh, they okay. go nuts for it. The Wii U is selling as well as like the PS4 in Japan, so it's doing all really? right over there. Right. Yeah. This is that Team Ninja as well. Yes. Hyrule yes. Warriors. Team okay. Ninja. All right. So no, it's got a bit. Team Ninja. Uh, Tecmo Koei. No. It, well, they're working with it's Team Ninja. Team oh, oh, that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it sounded a little bit shaky for for. Uh, I, I am Nintendo. so excited for Nintendo what they're going to show because like we don't know what Retro Studios is making. Mm. Okay, but we know that whatever they're working is going to be a masterpiece because yeah. that's yeah, everything right. that touches gold. That's right. I just um, want the comeback. I just want to see Nintendo because when they pull it out of the bag, God, oh they pull God. it out of the bag. Mm. I know. And what they're like having a live stream throughout the entire show and. The treehouse thing? Oh, is yeah. that right? I don't know. Can you and they're like on revealing? That? They're doing a live. <laughs> they're doing stream the whole presentation there. from a treehouse. From a treehouse outside LA Live. Oh no! Yeah, at their booth, and they're uh, dropping reveals throughout the yeah. show. Oh really? During the actual? Yeah. Their booth and everything. Okay, That's cool. Okay. Why haven't they made a new Pokemon game for the Wii U? Why has there not know. been Pokemon well, Snap? They, it's they, a friggin' tablet. We'll get they, Pokemon they're Snap. They're gonna show off the whatever uses the near field communication stuff with the right. Wii U. Right. Of course. Which I guess I mean Smash Brothers is, but there's probably gonna be a game built around that. We're gonna get the so. heartbeat sense, the vitality sensor. I hope so. Again. I don't know what's Final going on over here. That killer hardware that they've been waiting for. <laughs> yes. Okay, so it's it's a sort of a sad side situation. No, for I'm excited. No, it's because uh, the, stop being sad. the conversation seems to be I like know. either you 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 stop and Kids. rebuild. Or we are stuck with like sort of wet wet blanket releases the for the next. You know, it's, yeah, I mean it, it's true, but at the same time, when Nintendo releases a game, they release you know game of the year from last yeah. year. Yeah, yeah. yeah, a killer. They release Mario yeah. Kart 8, so it's great. like they're 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 super relevant to, to answer your first yeah. question because yeah. they make the best games. What is they do, the they make amazing games. Okay, well hopefully I don't think there's anyone on this couch or anyone watching 
uh, except for fanboys that wouldn't want Nintendo to pull something out of the bag this year. So yes. fingers okay. crossed. Uh, thanks very much, guys, for coming on. Uh, we'll be back in a couple of minutes. We're going to talk about PC stuff and all third-party uh, developers as well. If you have any questions, make sure to put them in the chat. But for now, we're going to check out a trailer for the Batman. Hello and welcome back to GameSpot's E3 prediction show. We've already talked about Nintendo, Sony and Microsoft. It's time to talk about PC video games. PC! You own one, you're probably watching this on one right now. And also third party developers. There's quite a lot of that. This is going to take a while. I'm very happy to be joined by Cameron Robinson. Hey Denny. Scotland. Yes, Say something I actually came from Scotland. Did you? Uh, Say freedom. I, free Say freedom. Thank you. <laughs> Say freedom Peter Brown. Freedom? Nice. Dan Hyde, say freedom. Freedom. Great, okay. Aussie, good. American, uh, Scottish and Irish. Actually, yours is closer to the film, really. Mm, yeah. yeah. It's the United Color Colors of Benetton of video games, <laughs> and we're here to talk about <laughs> PC, which is perhaps the most universally popular uh, platform, if you want to call it that, and then all, all a bunch of other stuff as well. First of all, hardware. I want to ask you first, Peter Brown. Steam machines. This yeah. seems to be a... It keeps coming up every time we talk about conferences in particular, mm -hmm. where are we with steam machines? What uh, the hell is a steam machine? <laughs> they still haven't made this like digestible. Okay, a steam machine is a PC that's effectively priced to compete with consoles. But what it really is is a machine that runs the Steam OS and supports Valve's controller. Valve has now delayed that to 2015. Yeah, uh, like everything. Like everything. Yeah. Uh, they're making incre incremental improvements to Steam OS. Um, but again, it's kind of like a Linux box, right? Mm. So it doesn't really support a lot of the games that you'd find on Windows. So honestly, right now, if you've got Steam installed on your Windows PC and you run big picture mode and you've got a 360 controller, you've effectively got a Steam machine. Yeah, so the, do you, did there be no announcements whatsoever from Valve in terms of hardware at, at E3 this year? No, I don't think Valve is going to release their own little Steam machine. Again, I think they're incentivizing third-party manufacturers to come up with stuff that will help them sell hardware and ultimately help people, will help Valve sell more software. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Cameron Robinson, I know yes. you were at Eve FanFest in uh, wonderful Iceland only mm -hmm. two weeks ago? Uh, about, about a month ago now. Excellent. Yeah. Um, you were there to see Eve, Eve Valkyrie? Mainly to see Valkyrie, yeah. And yeah. also to use the Oculus Rift. Yes, so, so they, they had the development kit 2 there, which is okay. the first time I got my hands on that. And uh, yeah, I, I got to play Valkyrie, which is now being it's now being made with Unreal Four, and yeah, the, yeah. the difference was huge. Yeah, that's right. Your video preview was yeah, great. I saw the side by side. Yeah, it was it was it was really quite impressive actually, because I, I was I played um, Oculus before, never Valkyrie. Yeah. Um, on like one of the older units, and putting on the DK two, especially having that like depth camera, like that was the biggest thing for me, because mm. I got quite a lot of nausea walking around that old Tuscan villa, but so, not yeah. in Valkyrie at all, because you, you stick it on and you, you immediately you, you look at your avatar, yeah. and it really helps like. Place and get that sense of presence. So it's is it judging you yeah. leaning in? Yeah, it's stuff? a camera like by, I don't know a meter in front of you, and it, yeah. it judges your depth. So you can literally lean in towards the controls, or you have a dial over there saying, like I don't know your position. You can look at that, yeah. and your camera angle changes with that. Because before it was like you had a rod, steel rod down your spine. So yeah, yeah. every time you moved forward, you didn't get that, and that was jarring. So or it was for me at least. It's weird because this time last year, Oculus was still very much a this might be a piece of technology that people start to use. Yeah. Since that's happened, like we've had this re massive buyout by Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, it's now you know Project Morpheus has been announced and everything else. What? Th I hate saying this, <laughs> and I know Peter's going to jump on my neck and bite my lungs out when Can't I say wait. this. <laughs> he does that a lot. Is VR actually not going to be a fad this time around? Is this something that people are, we're going to see more and more of and it'll be like inexorably tied to gaming? Yeah, I think like the interesting thing is that it's really kind of uniting the PC as a platform. The PC has never really had anything 
at least at E3, to sort of unify yeah. what's on show. Mm -hmm. um, and the fact that you need to make experiences specifically for VR is going to actually create something that is new and sexy and awesome, and you want to see that, you know. Do you think that developers like the way Eve, the guys there, are making CCP. Valkyrie yeah. like specifically for that? Do you think this year we might see some like games made specifically for with the Oculus in mind? Definitely, yeah. I mean, because we've got like a few, which um, also uh, David Braben, right? Uh, what's it? Uh, the name escapes me. Star Citizen. Elite. Oh. No, no, Elite. Elite. Dangerous. Oh, yeah, Sorry, Elite Dangerous Star, yeah. is also Oculus. Um, but I think we are going to see a few. But what I'm really keen to see is if we're going to get any which aren't space sims, because that's yes. pretty much all we've seen. So yes. Like, where's um, my driving game? And where's my I want, it, I want someone to convince me that a first-person game where I walk around is yeah. not going to make me vomit on the floor. Like, <laughs> I'm still to be convinced by that. Adam Orth, you know the guy who was unceremoniously dismissed from Microsoft after yes. um, his tweets, he's working on a game that's going to be at E3. It's not a space sim, but you play as a spaceman in a space suit that's running out of air. Oh, so it's terrifying. sort of like oh, gravity gosh. simulator. Yeah. Uh, and that's going to be something that's like at least a unique first-person experience. <laughs> cool. All right, well, let's step away from the PC for the moment. Uh, if you have any questions for about PC, by all means, uh, keep sending them in. But for the moment, let's talk about third-party publishers. First of all, EA. Talking about weird first-person um, video game uh, worlds, are we going to see Mirror's Edge 2 this year? I don't think you're going to see that and Star Wars Battlefront. Battlefront no. is definitely going to be there. I think they're going to save Mirror's Edge 2 for a bit later. And I think there's a lot further off anyway. So. Yeah. Well, there is also the question that Microsoft has this third-party exclusive that's supposed to get people really excited. Okay. I mean, I have a few theories, but Mirror's Edge 2 could be one of them. I think even just teasing that a little bit more mm -hmm. might give them the sort of excitement that they and the buzz that they need from the audience. You think that's going to be a Microsoft exclusive? It could be. I mean, you know, they essentially, if they're saying that, look, there's a third-party game that's coming that's going to get people really excited, it's got to be something that we already know about, like mm -hmm. in terms of a franchise, right? Something that people want. And we've literally seen nothing except for this trailer at E3. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like nothing out, nothing at all. So it'd be, it'd be great to have. But I almost feel like it might be a better tactic for them to continue showing nothing because this trailer was so good. It just reminded everyone that it does exist and it's mm. a game that, you know, everyone, it was a darling game that everyone wanted last year. Unless they're going to show us loads, maybe it would be better to. I think it'd be unfortunate it. if it was a Microsoft exclusive because yeah. this is the kind of thing you want on PlayStation with Morpheus and with, you know, Oculus. Yeah. If they, obviously, that's going to take a lot of Is it really? Time to Do you want to be getting sick all over yourself? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, if you didn't get sick in Valkyrie, I think this could work. I love uh, that's a I disagree. I'm the test subject. <laughs> yeah. Can't in vomit. Let's do it. Remember yeah. GameSpot used to do things like sound, video. Remember like playability. Mm -hmm. Like we used to break down. Vomit. It's just vomit. It's going to be one. <laughs> What's the puke scale? We'll on measure this in game? milliliters. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's absolutely rank. Uh, Star yeah. Wars Battlefront. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Think yeah, I definitely think it's going to be there. Show it off. Yeah, yeah, they said in the shareholders meeting that it's coming Q2, Q3, 2015. Right. So there's a pretty safe bet that that's going to be shown now if they're planning, what, a year down the road. Uh, what about uh, Battlefield Hardline? We've already seen stuff leaked, or Omaha, as they didn't want people yeah. to, to know about it. Um, yeah, I know they're announcing some stuff after E3. Do you think it's going to have much of a presence at the show? I think it has to. Yeah? Yeah. I think it's just sort of like a thoroughly underwhelming concept, really. Yeah. I mean, like, it's, it's not a mainline Battlefield title, and Battlefield's all about scale. And every time they've tried to go, like, close quarters, urban, it's sort of been like, oh, okay, that's fun for a distraction. But if they focus an entire game on it, um, Probably maybe something cool can come out of it. I mean, I did like the special forces weapons, like the uh, grappling hook and zipline and that kind of thing. Yeah. But I'm just not really that interested in what it actually is, as we've seen so far. Uh, Dragon Age? Any hype for Dragon Age? Mm, well, the, we haven't really seen much in terms of gameplay, and I think everyone's just burned by the previous. You know, what was what was the one that nobody liked? Two, well, two. Two. Yeah, two, yeah, pretty yeah, much. Uh, yeah, and so this is Inquisition. Yeah, this is yeah. Inquisition. I th it, basically, from the trailer, it looks like it's there's Oblivion Gate is opened, or they've got some different name for it. That's what it looks like. Demons <laughs> are spilling out onto the world, Aww. and you've got to. I mean, it could be really great, but all about how they execute the combat and whether they stick with their their old what they do best, like proper R RPG, mm. or whether they're gonna try and action it up again and disappoint people. I love that they can't figure out whether to put a number on it or origins or a subtitle yeah, or that kind right. of thing. Mm. It really shows that they actually don't know what they're doing with that series. It's a funny yeah. one and yeah. it's changed hands a bunch of time at this stage as well, right? It's is still it? Bioware. Is it Bioware still? Yeah. Well, I guess Bioware has been shaken up so much over the yeah. past couple yeah. of years. It's a little bit different. Uh, any love for The Sims 4? It was in our trailer released last week. Looks pretty good. The goth family got a new house, yo! <laughs> Finally. The Sims is the kind of thing that it's like, it's going to be awesome to play, but it's not really much of a presence at a trade show, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. No? You don't no. think so? No. But no. This, don't EA do that anyway? They usually pump out the, the family-friendly one for the headline for the mainstream press? Like, the, we're obviously going to get, so we're going to get, like, EA Sport UFC, the demo came out today. Yeah, uh, FIFA 15. FIFA right. 15, presumably, some mm. sort of a, like, leaning more next-gen into that way. What other, like, games in that ilk, like, 
is this the year where they have to make a really good Madden for once? <laughs> <laughs> it's a they probably <laughs> should, but <laughs> I mean, will they? Well, yeah. I don't know. All right, let's, let's uh, leave EA for the moment then. Um, a game from uh, 2K that, uh, see, anyone who's played this at a trade show has said it's absolutely incredible, but it feels like there's hardly any information about Evolve mm. like out there. Um, have any of you guys played it? Yeah, I played a few no. hours of it. What's your What's your take on Evolve? Uh, it's It's almost like they made an entire game out of the tank combat from Left 4 Dead, and oh, really? really sort of like deep dived. How can we make this asymmetric multiplayer uh, work really well and be balanced as well? I think like the balance is the key thing that's going to make or break this. What I played was pretty balanced, and you do have clutch plays. There are lots of like skillful moments and that kind of thing. Um, I think that it's it's going to be a really really interesting one. So which build did you play? Because recently they, they changed it, didn't they? They added yeah before like, that I played like the first reveal build. So right. Okay. Before they so, changed the class. So they have already experimented. I think a bit yes. with how they're going to balance. And it. I like that they are flexible like that mm. because they obviously know what's going to be you know best for the titles. So. So do you think it'll be much of a showing at E3? Because I feel like they're at the stage where they really need to start putting this in people's faces. Well, they've announced they're going to have a tournament uh, on like live streamed uh, on one of the days. So yeah, I think it's definitely going to be like. Hey, here is actual like uncut gameplay. Here is how it actually plays in motion. So yeah. that's the perfect way to actually see that. And they showed a bunch of PAX East as well, you know. And there's a lot of coverage that came yeah. out of that. So, and that was a public event, obviously, right? Yeah. So people have seen it right now. I think this is right, like you said, the time to really put it out there. Because it's one of the like. few games that's coming out this calendar year that people to get excited about, I guess. Yeah. Um, Ubisoft, are they are the last of the sort of the the big six or whatever our big five at this stage that, um, that have their own press conferences. Uh, it seems like most of their announcements have slipped out early. <laughs> like Assassin's Creed Unity was the first one a couple of months ago. Yeah. Are you guys just excited about that at all? Not I really thoroughly. want to be, but, but I'm, I'm not. I'm pretty burnt out yeah. on Assassin's Creed. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Did you play Black Flag? Yes, I did. And the sailing was great, and that was awesome. But every time I had to get out of the boat, I was like, oh, God, not again. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've tried like three or four times to get back in yeah. and actually l allow it to grab me, and it's just yeah. never happened. And this one, they don't haven't even said what is the thing that is going to make this unique. You know? Yeah. So All we know is right now, it seems like Revolutionary Paris mm -hmm. and you're an assassin. And that there is a next-gen version, and then one that is separate that is coming out on current or <laughs> previous gen. Oh, come on! <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Is that where we're at? Because <laughs> the I way mean, you think has, of an uh, Sorry, go on. No, I was going to say I, I think that was certainly where I'm at. I mean, I've I've struggled to get into an Assassin's Creed in any meaningful way hmm. since uh, Assassin's Creed Two. Or no, what was the Brotherhood. third one? Brotherhood, yeah, yeah, yeah. which was excellent, hmm. and then they've all just kind of disappointed me since then. But there is there is a burnout. And uh, yeah, unless they were going to like completely overhaul the combat or how you climb, because for me, the, the, they ruined the climbing when they made it easy. That's, yeah, that's when of, I yeah. stopped finding it that fun. It's so unless they're going to overhaul stuff, it's it's just a reskin, right? With great French accents, maybe. Yeah. You know. <laughs> um, so the other thing, I guess, one of the more interesting rejuvenations of a franchise that they've done recently is, is Far Cry. Like Far Cry Three is was. One of my favorite games come out that year. Absolutely outstanding. They've released the the concept image of the new one, uh, which rubbed some people up the wrong way. Uh, but presumably they're going to show some of this uh, at their. If conference I see well. a single prompt that says you are leaving the mission area, I'm just going to be like. <laughs> <I'm checking out." laughs> Are you just waiting for another burn down crops full of weed while... Uh, yeah, well, I mean, it's weird. Place. Like, Far Cry as a series has sort of been all over the place, you know. Yeah. Three was sort of a combination of both elements of two and one. So it seems like they've found their footing, and this is going to be sort of like Far Cry 3 take two. two I right, think it's yeah. Far Cry 3 plus kind of mountainous, snowy yeah, yeah. areas and hunting snow leopards. Like that's, is, that's what I'm assuming I'm going to get to do. It Elephants. is the most bizarre series, because the first one was a like a first person like uh, we're showing off nice 3D technology mm -hmm. game that came out of Eastern Europe. The second one was an African malaria simulator. Mm, yeah. The third was like a, I don't even know what the hell that game was, but it was the amazing. Beach, like, but also, no, it was But then it had yeah. these weird like story concepts that never really worked out, but just yep. kept you guessing. Um, no, you just didn't get it. <laughs> I, don't think, I, don't think, I don't think anyone did. Like, but I loved it. I don't know. Like, are you guys excited about Far Cry 4? Oh, really, so much. Yeah, 3 was my probably my best game from last year. Yeah, so yeah. four, and the ability to combine the jungle stuff with climbing around mountains and mm. elephants and rhinos as well, I think. Here's the thing about Ubisoft, though. Like, they want lightning to strike twice. I mean, you saw how yeah. they revealed Watch Dogs, and then they revealed Division in yes. exactly the same way. They're going to try and have a new Vars, and I don't think they're going to be able to live up to that, because that was sort of like... Um, Flash in the pan, you know, like one time thing. It was amazing. Yeah, that yeah. presentation mm -hmm. was great. Mm -hmm. So they've got a couple of other games that I guess are. The, the, they've got actually got a lot of games on the go at the moment. The Crew is another one they've been shopping around for mm -hmm. a while now. Have any of you guys played The Crew? 
not yet. No, no. it, it looks like Borderlands in cars. Yeah, I, I feel like it doesn't seem particularly interesting. It just looks a lot like Rivals for me as well, except mm. more open world. I mean, I, I was kind of cops robbers thing going yeah. on. I was kind of yeah, hoping yeah. I would get that like Burnout Paradise hook from it, maybe like if if it's interesting in that way, like in a new sort of like social way. Doesn't look as just like fun and carefree, you know? It's sort of like uh, it's a big sigh, Peter Brian. What was that for? <laughs> <laughs> That's huge. <laughs> Say what's well, in your mind. I don't know. It's between Drive Club and the crew. I mean, I, I you know I miss like really like core racing games. And for me, that's the Forza, and that's Gran Turismo. And I like when those come out, and I just, these games that come out that try to experiment with that, they show up, and then they disappear, and no one cares about it. Yeah. And so I have a really hard time getting excited for something that's, I mean, like, what? Yeah. What am I looking at here? I don't know. <laughs> car video game. <laughs> I hope I hope whoever's working on this is not the same guys who did the car driving or the, the car driving, uh, the, the <laughs> handling models in Watch Dogs. Yeah. Uh, fingers crossed. Uh, so perhaps the game that's got the most hype around it, uh, especially in relation to uh, um, E3 in particular, uh, is The Division. Uh, mm. When they showed it off, was it two years ago now? The first time or was it last? No, it was last year. year. It was last, last year. year? Yeah. Dude shutting car door with his hand. Mm. Everyone freaking the hell out. Um, we're not going to see this game for a while. What do they need to show this year to keep people entertained? About? I think the thing is, like, they're really good at their first reveals being slow and sedate and really sort of absorbing and immersive. Yeah. So what they're going to show this year is the action side of it. They're going to show massive firefights and, you know, those kinds of uh, division versus division engagements that they've been sort of hinting at at the end of that first trailer. Mm. Well, and one of the things, too, that, like, they've been saying, or I guess the rumor is that they've been working so much on the tech side of things that the actual game development is still pretty early. Yeah. So I'm really curious to see if what we see this year will be drastically, you know, drastically different from what was presented last year. I don't think it'll be too far off the mark, but I expect it's, it's going to look a little bit different. Mm in terms of the setting and the mechanics and how everything sort of plays together. Uh, we've got a bunch of questions coming in from folks. I want to just uh, get a few of them uh, done before we continue. Uh, Blurred Cube asks, any chance of Rockstar showing up? Rockstar are funny when at E3. They tend to not usually play that game. Yeah. They didn't need to. Yeah. Yeah. So probably no. Nope. Didn't they say at an earnings call that they had something coming out? Before uh, the next financial year, probably like, Red Dead for PC, if anything. Yeah. But. Would it yeah, be, or would it be, or Grand Theft Auto Five for PC at this stage? No. Do you no know? way. Because there's rumors about the next gen GTA Five. There's rumors about next gen Skyrim, sure. like one that might be made specifically for the console. They'll do next gen GTA Five before PC GTA Five, I think. You don't think they do them at the same time? Maybe. No. No. Separate them up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's weird. Rockstar, one of those companies that kind of just do their own thing. They tend not to really need E3 to, to show mm -hmm. stuff off. Another one the chat's been asking about, uh, Hasoon asks, uh, Mass Effect. Do we see something, a new Mass Effect this year? Or at least like a glimmer at one? I think that you may get, sort of like we had with Mirror's Edge 2 at the end of that press conference, you'll probably get um, Mass Effect subtitle, whatever it is they're going with, whether it's like the first contact prequel or uh, yeah. you know, hundreds of years in the future sequel. Um, it's probably not going to be... Uh, playable at all. Uh, I don't know if you'll see any gameplay, but you're definitely going to get some kind of teaser, I think. Yeah, another game we're likely to see at uh, either or both press conferences, and probably a lot of in terms of uh, stage show presence as well, is Destiny. Uh, Bungie have been sort of, they showed off a little bit last year that got people excited about it. Is it just me, or am, am I, is this game not as exciting as I was kind of, I'm not, I, I feel like I haven't hopped on the hype train with this one yet. I mean, that's sort of the unanimous impression that came out of, I think, an event that happened about a month ago. Yes. Everyone sort of got their hands on it and was like, all right, it's an MMO. Yeah. What, uh, I don't know what's, what's really different here. You know, and that sort of seemed, I mean, the world is supposed to be interesting, right? You've got some of the, you know, the bungee things that, that are persisting here from the Halo universe in terms of aesthetic and stuff, but is it going to be something great? Greater than just another MMO made by Bungie? They've just yeah. been so vague about how their shared world and, you know, connectedness actually yeah. works that I don't really actually understand how this is multiplayer, how this is single player, and, and you know, like how these things all interact and are persistent. So. Yeah. And th th I feel like people maybe feel like they've been burned on Watch Dogs a bit because mm. a lot of that, there was the hinting as like these vague yep. recollections of what that, you know, connectedness was going to be, and in the end it was just people can enter your game if yeah. you want them to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I guess we'll see. We've got a bunch more games to go through here. Uh, a game that I am really, really hoping is announced. I have heard that it probably won't be. Bethesda have since come out and said they're not going to announce anything. What are the chances of seeing Fallout 4 tease this year? Well, I think P. Hines was, was kind of, he kind of confirmed we're not going to see anything, didn't he? He was talking about, bat was it Battle Cry? What's, what's the, and that's some other game that they're yeah. going to be talking okay. about. Um, which means we're probably not. I was also kind of gunning for a mention of uh, yeah. Dishonored 2, but that's probably just me. <laughs> but then uh, if it's no new IP, then the rumors of the Skyrim HD version might still, that could still be a thing, if that's a thing. What would you think about that? Cameron, who has a weekly show about Skyrim, <coughs> like you're probably Skyrim. a game God. A for like, 
people who are interested in that. Would you play a, a, a PS4 and Xbox One version uh, of Skyrim? No, I don't see the point because you don't even need a powerful PC these days to play Skyrim that looks great yeah. using EMBs and everything. Like you can build a pretty budget PC. You know, I don't. I don't want a HD Skyrim. I want a Skyrim pre-installed with all the most amazing mods, so I don't have to do it myself. <laughs> right. You know, <laughs> that would be more valuable. I, I guess. Hard drive. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Because yeah. I guess that's, that's like you. You guys have been playing Skyrim now for like oh. three years off the back of the <laughs> fact. Far off. Yeah. Like <laughs> three mods. years in November. Like, three yeah. years. Like. Isn't that the problem? Like I remember the Unreal Tournament three on P on PS three you could mod, but like just modding on consoles has never really ever been a thing. No, I think it's just too complicated with um, you know the potential for damaging your, your yeah. game and you know the, no one wants to be liable for that. So yeah, I don't think we'll see that. But um, Civilization Beyond Earth, anyone anyone hyped up about that? Oh one? yeah, totally. I mean, I haven't, I haven't played Civilization since three because cool. they've just been too similar. Yeah, yeah. I did play Alpha Centauri back in the day mm. and. I love civilization. I love space. So yeah, this this is gonna be quite exciting. We don't. I want to see. I want to get some proper details about like how the mechanics are gonna work. Like how you start it off. What type of units you're gonna get. Mm. How the like encounters with the aliens that are on the planets are gonna be. Is it just gonna be like barbarian encounters? Is it gonna be different? I really want to get some details. But I'm quite excited. You couldn't play as the aliens in Avatar, could you? You were just you were. Well, or the the the. I guess it wasn't really aliens, was it? It was just the world. Yeah. The, like the world elements, like the animals and creatures, wasn't it? Yeah, I think they were just like encounters, basically. I want to know. Alpha oh, it's been so long. Game I played a lot of: Hotline Miami, Hotline Miami Two. Do you think we're going to see some of that here? We've got, we've got to. It's, it's it's coming out soon, right? Uh, that's the thing. Like at this yeah. stage, I feel like yeah. it's coming out in a couple of months, right? Yeah, they've been showing it off. It was at PAX East again, like back in April. And it Does was. Does it have right. a console exclusivity thing going already? It's. I'm trying to think. I think it's only on Play PlayStation and PC, Is right? It timed exclusive on PS. I, I should have looked this up before we started. I played it on PC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I'm probably going to yeah. play it on PC too. Let's see. Uh, a couple more because the folks here want to want to shut the show, but I want to talk about F1 2014 because I know all you guys want to talk about <laughs> that. Codemasters haven't like even talked about whether they're doing that, so I'm I'm genuinely interested to see if they talk about an next gen F1 game because it looked pretty. What do you guys think about that? I don't think it needs to come out every year. <laughs> God damn it! Of course it does. It's a sports game. That's how it works. Um, is there any other games that uh, uh, you guys are, are interested in? I think that Square will show a bit more of the next Deus Ex. Okay. Yeah, Deus mm -hmm. Ex Universe, whatever they're calling it. They need something to kind of prop themselves up, and I don't really know what they have yet, so. They're going to show some more Final Fantasy 15 for sure. Woo! Witcher 3? Well, they, you know, oh, yeah. that, that can get a lot of people really excited. I mean, that game has been in development for eight years now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, then there is The Witcher 3. Witcher 3. Yeah, that's, Witcher 3 that's, as well. my, that's my most anticipated thing to see of the whole show. I want to see one more Witcher 3. Awesome. Well, uh, from the sounds of it, we've been talking a hell of a bunch of mess about video games for the past hour and a bit. Uh, there's no shortage of uh, cool stuff to see at E3 this year, so make sure you stick on GameSpot.com all next week. Now, it's time to give away some stuff. Some su some sweet swag. So we had we had this competition uh, last week. Uh, Mary Kish came up with where it was ask people to make box art for games that they might like to see. So your Half Life threes and your such and suches. So uh, these aren't the winners, but these are some other really good ones as well. We had Metroid <laughs> <right> there, <laughs> Mass <laughs> Red <laughs> Dead Effect. These are flying past. Take your time, boys. Half Life three, Xbox One exclusive. I think not. That game's actually coming out. <laughs> yeah. They just took the logo and made the box. Yeah, worthy effort. That's Chris Waters. That doesn't count. <laughs> Connect selfie. That's a really that, good that's, one. That, that's not one of the winners because he lives in Poland, but it was pretty rad. So we're sticking it in there. Uh, that guy drew. Is that Vanquish 2? Yep, that's Vanquish what it 2. Says. I would love a Vanquish yeah. game. Uh, special points for making it. <laughs> oh, my God. Super realistic graphics. <laughs> yep, yeah, sure. Got it. Nailed it. Let's take two seconds on that one. Wow. There's uh, way too, too, way too many keys key on that. Uh, yeah, sure. Monkey Island. I can dig that. Destiny and Morpheus. <laughs> and yeah, limited <laughs> edition. Throw it all in there. Bloody Roar 4. Oh, Maxwell oh, McGee wow. is grinning in his seat right now. Oh, really? If he's watching. He can probably put that one in. Oh, that's... <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, by, Mary, by Mary Kish, <laughs> age nine. nine. <laughs> uh, okay, we've got four. Hold this stuff. So, one, two, and three. Or sorry... Four, three, and two are winning these. The winner is winning both of these bad boys on a laptop, a Razer laptop. Um, so thanks to Razer for, for helping us out with that. We're going to have a look at number four first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Congratulations, Cameron <coughs> Horst, with your good, uh, good racially uh, insensitive portrayal of Kim Jong-un <laughs> and Just Cause. 
That's pretty good. Just end yourself a Kraken pro. It would, yeah, it'd be cool. If, uh, I would like to see Avalanche show off a new Just Cause game, especially if Kim Jong Un was in it. That'd be great. In third place, Final Fantasy 15. I know my Roman numerals. Crazy kiddo. Nice work. Uh, bonus points for um, well using friggin' archaic means of drawing things. <laughs> Cave painting. When was the last time you used a pen? This morning. Did you write your rent check? No. Okay. I sh I you got to write. Oh, you <laughs> did that? All right. Okay. When was the last time you used a pen? Yesterday. When was the last time you used a pen? Today, but I dropped it. God damn it. <laughs> In <laughs> second place. I didn't use damn things. <laughs> second place. WWE versus Capcom. <laughs> Special wow. edition. Is that John Cena and Ryu? Fair enough. So many characters. Real Marky B. Nice work. You won yourself a pair of headphones. And in first place to win a laptop and all this stuff over there is Hyrule Warriors. <laughs> first place emblem underscore 2007. Um, uh, GameSpot user there who was uh, spent all day working on this bad boy apparently. It's impressive. It's pretty good. It's pretty nicely done. Graphics. Uh, congratulations. Much graphics. Wow. 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 So, so Hyrule. <laughs> It's been a long stream. Thank you very much, gentlemen, <laughs> uh, Dan, um, Peter, and Cameron Robinson for coming on and chatting to me about E3. I'm hyped. You guys hyped? Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah, I can't wait. Definitely. We're flying down. Friday. Friday. Saturday. Sunday. Sunday. Saturday. 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 Uh, we're getting in there. We've got um, live streams of all the press conferences on GameSpot.com. Plus, we've got two stage shows throughout the entire week. Myself, Chris Waters, Sean McInnes, and Cameron Robinson are going to be hosting them uh, with basically every single game that will be playable on the show for. So make sure you stick around on GameSpot.com. Our hub should be up pretty soon as well, e3.gamespot.com, which will have all the information of when all that stuff can be on live and also on demand, of course. We do not have a lobby next week we, because, you know, E3 is on and, you know, who gives a shit? Uh, and the week after that, then, uh, I believe we're all probably going to be too tired to do a lobby so we'll see what happens then so if we don't see you we'll see you at e3 have a wonderful weekend and uh yeah greatness awaits baby